Hello, this is Dr. Charles Shedlovsky, and here today we're going to talk about our second installment in the neurooptometry uh, segment for ODs on Facebook. And today, you know, we'd like to, I'm going to talk about what's really going on in the brain after a neurologic injury. I mean, it, we'll be, in future uh, casts, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how we can test and how we can treat. But really, before we do any of that, we really have to kind of have a better sense of kind of what's going on in the brain after you've had a, a concussion or stroke or traumatic brain injury or any other neurologic event. So largely we have to think about the, the brain as really being very complex and vision takes up many, many aspects or many portions of the brain. We do know that 80% of the retinal fibers, mostly from the Mac, that travel to the visual cortex for unconscious and conscious visual processing. And then about 18% of the fibers um, travel to the midbrain, primarily the superior colliculus and the pulvinar, uh, for unconscious use and spatial orientation. Uh, and the real key here is that it's unconscious, or you can even have your eyes closed and this system actually works. The third thing, uh, the remaining part of 2%, it travels to the limbic system, uh, and that's for central regulatory things, such as... Uh, emotion, uh, temperature, things of that nature that go to the regulatory center. So the visual system really af affects every part of the brain possible. Now, if you want to th kind of think about it from, from this perspective, we really have these two pathways. Sometimes they're called the calcarine pathway and, and the versatile pathway. Sometimes you can call it, uh, you know, your... Uh, more your pathway for ambient vision versus your pathway for focal vision. But basically, the, the primary visual pathway um, uh, or the retinal calcarine pathway goes from the optic nerve to the lateral like geniculate nucleus um, and then back to your visual cortex for visual processing. From there, it might jump over to the ventral stream for further processing. Um, uh, the ambient pathway, uh, or the secondary pathway, or sometimes called the ret retinal tectal pathway, goes from the optic nerve to the superior colliculus to the pulvinar to the associated pathways, um, and then ultimately onto the dorsal stream. So let's kind of, kind of look at that focal pathway for a second. And really, the, the real key structure here is the lateral geniculate nucleus. Uh, and it contains multiple layers. Um, and they, the, the, each, the, the upper layers are called the parvocellular layers. Um, when I was back in school, we called them midget cells because they're small, tiny cells. They're very focal in nature. They take up a very small unit of space. Okay. Um, they are slow in processing because they're processing a lot of information. The second type of cell is called, a, was called, it's called a magnocell or, uh, and the magnocell, um, when I was in school, once again, was called something different. It was called the parasol cell. Why? Because it looked like it was like a parasol, an umbrella, if you will. And it's very large in size, very fast processing. And, it, and it's what provides spatial information primarily to the magnocellular system. So as we put all the pieces together uh, from the lateral nucleus, it then goes to the occipital lobe for processing things like color and contour and acuity and voluntary pursuits. Uh, and it's where also your binocular cells are. And then the, the once again, that secondary pathway goes from the retina um, down uh, to the, uh, to the um, superior colliculus and the pulvinar and down to the brainstem. And what, let's think about what's going on in the brainstem. You have input from your lower extremities through the spinal cord, you're also your cerebellum and your vestibular nuclei are located there. So really what it is, is it's almost like a big funnel for all the sensory information that we have in our visual system. So that's kind of, I call it the sensory funnel. That's really that secondary pathway. We're taking a lot of information for sensory processing. So let's kind of, kind of pull all, start pulling all these pieces together. You have the focal system. Uh, is for, which is for detailed discrimination, identification, attention, concentration. It's oriented to the present, and it's primarily conscious, and it's very reactive in nature. Um, uh, those, uh, once again, slower speed in processing, 
uh, mostly cortical and higher processing. That's what it gives us our central vision. So as I said, it's the focal system. It's primarily parvocellular and tells you what something is. The other system uh, is, or feeds the dorsal stream and it's primarily peripheral uh, retina, ambient, primarily magnocellular, and tells us where is it and where am I in space, okay? So this part of the system, the midbrain essentially develop, uh, delivers our sensory motor information. So our spatial processes, if you want to think about it, uh, include things like pre, or tend to be pre-conscious and, and proactive. They receive feedback from the cortex, so we get visual information from the cortex, and we utilize that, and brings forward all possibilities for neuroorganization. And that's the real key point. So what do I think is going on when we have a, a neurological insult? Well, the primary thing that I see, I feel here is what neuroinflammation. And when we have neuroinflammation, we have a few different issues going on. We can't handle motion, movement, or sound, or light. We can't focus. Uh, we can see it frequently in dis developmental disorders. And then oftentimes we see it with a history of brain injury cu currently or in the past. It's also pretty common when we see someone with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or autism or multiple sclerosis. Um, and the key thing, you know, we, we, we learned... Uh, a lot about neurons when we were in optometry school, uh, and we learned very little about glial cells. And glial cells, um, uh, actually glia in Latin means glue. Um, they're the glue cells. They're your immune system of your of your nervous system. They also are your. Um, they also help build the myelin sheath on top uh, on the uh, on top of the nerve cells on the neurons. Um, they're so they're close, most closely related to macrophages. Uh, particularly the microglia are, are, are kind of the ambassadors to the brain and they fight infection and are responsible for release of chemicals that damage neurons and the scavengers of the nervous system. The problem is, is that when they become activated, uh, from a neurological insult, they go from looking kind of like a starfish with many arms and tentacles, uh, pointing out to, to more like an amoeba. Um, so they stop making the connections. They stop making those glue connections that they, that they're known to make. And that's kind of what, what creates the biggest problem in the nervous system when we have um, uh, uh, some strikes or blow to the head uh, from a concussive injury, or you even have something uh, like a stroke, which tends to be more focal. You've got this activated neuroglia after a brain injury, and they tend to be much less effective. So that is just kind of a good summary of kind of what's going on in the brain after a uh, neurologic injury. There'll be more next month, and, we'll, and I look forward to talking to everyone again at that point in time. Take care.